Listen, so here's the thing, we're going to start something new today, and here's what I need you to know. What we're starting today will not be on the quiz on Friday, okay? So everything up to this point, from the very first day in class to this point, is fair game for the quiz. I can ask you whatever I want. I want to ask you to do 30 mole conversions. I can ask you to do 30 mole conversions. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. If you ask me to do 30 mole conversions, I'm going to be very upset. I'm going to be feeling a little super I'm forgetting your tests aren't five questions up here, and it's scary. One million hey, Mr. questions. Hall. I mean, not just I mean, anybody. Number five anybody got like a water bottle I can borrow? Yeah, exactly. I'm really thirsty, and I, I need to really drink water. I just got really lucky off these ears. <laughs> like, the exact like, thing I need to do. All right, so. I'm like thirsty, thirsty. Here is what we're going to work on now. So we've been talking about electromagnetic radiation. I'm going to go ahead and tell you what I start on today is going to be something that's going to be a little weird to you because either way it goes, there's going to be questions because this lesson and the next lesson, they connect together, but I've found out, I've tried it, I've tried it going with the other lesson first and it's more confusing for kids and we spend more time on it. I do this one first, kids get it and then whenever I go to the other lesson they're like, oh that's what that is. So y'all probably gonna be like little Hannah right now and start looking and saying, what's that? <coughs> What's super cute. Can I go for my water bottle walk? Oh my god. I'm you got 30 seconds. Oh. So what we're gonna work on are called electron configurations. I remember some of the seeding tools read something that swap and a half the length. Now, when you look at electron configurations, what electron configurations are all about is where the electrons both are. So where the electrons are at. And we have certain ways of symbolizing this, and they go by three different names. So this is a little foreshadowing. The first one is what we call orbital notation. The second one is called electron configuration. And the third one is what we call noble gas configuration. Teachers, we had one best that just got here. Those students are signing in, but they'll be on their way to class. So what happens here is that they have uh, these three different configurations or notations or the ways that we're going to symbolize where the electrons are at. That's all it is. Every one of them deals with the same thing, but they all look different. This is the thing that's going to make your life lovely. You're going to love this. This is the thing you're going to beg me for a quiz on because you're going to get the pattern. You're going to love the pattern. So let's hop right to it. Whenever you're going to look at doing electron configurations, there are certain rules you have to follow. So let's talk about the rules to follow. Spell the rules wrong. Are you, uh, it's actually supposed to be R U L E S, not Z. I don't know if you knew that or not, but that looks like the. Uh, yeah, it's it's rules, guys. <gasps> so, <gasps> oh my! Rules <laughs> suck. <laughs> I break the rules. He's so gangster. Bro, how long? Is, they haven't done that in years, <clears> have they? The Disney Channel thing. Oh, okay. Cool. So, <laughs> first rule we gotta follow. I'm going to find these as we go through them. You have to know these rules. This is the hard part. I'm foreshadowing this. I'm telling you this straight to your face. Look into the camera and hear me. 
You'll see me on your screen. Yeah. You must know the rules. This is where people always get ripped up. Uh -oh. The first rule. What is the first rule, Mr. Hall? Okay. Has a weird name. What is it, Mr. Hall? Off ball principle. I bet. Uh -huh. Off ball principle. Softball principle. Off ball. Off ball. Oh, I'm going to remember that part. <laughs> Softball principle. Tonight is in my ear. <laughs> Off-ball principle states the electron will occupy the lowest energy level available. Uh, lowest energy level possible. What the off-ball principle gives us is something very special. What this is, is called fill order. Filper? In order to get the fill order, you have two options. Option one is mine, my personal favorite, the periodic table. What is Mr. Hall going to give you on your quizzes? <coughs> the periodic table. table. <laughs> so guess what you get? The periodic table. So if you learn how to read and break down the periodic table, you got it in front of you. Or you have the option that I hate. Uh oh. Option two. I'm gonna go with that option. Is doing this. One S. So you're gonna make a column that goes one through seven S. Next to that, we're gonna make the P column. But it starts at two P. Three P. What shenanigans are you doing? P. What is this? Seven P. You have that option. Now, the next clue. I swear if it's like 3Z, 4Z, 5Z. Do the D. So 3D, 4D, 5D, 6D. <coughs> Wait, does it go to 7D? Nope, I'm 7D. Does 7D exist? Yes, but we do not have enough electrons in order to worry about 7D. <coughs> then, I think this will show up better. <coughs> we have the Fs. Oh, no. 4F, 5F. Now, it could be crazy, but it looks like it's getting smaller. Now, here's what you have to do is run diagonal lines through it, but you have to run it properly. This is the part why I don't like this. Kids can mess up on their lines. this option you have to be able to do the lines properly. This is why I do not like it but I still give it to kids. So the order that we go through it is all laid by the lines. You start at the line and you go all the way through. Then you go to the next line go all the way through. Next line. All the way through. So the fill order that we end up with goes like this. Oh good. Oh, there is a third option. Oh. Option three is you memorize it. Wait, wait. So I'm going to suck at option three. Is option two called fill order? 
No, that's all. No, this is the fill order. Oh, that's the oh. fill order is how the electrons are going to fill into the orbitals. I know you don't know what an orbital is yet. Oh, no, I know. I see you looking at me. Like, what, where was that? <laughs> two P, or not two P? That is the question. Three S. 3P, 4S, 3D, 4P. The weird thing is I've done this so long I kind of have the memory. 5S, 5P, uh, wait, no, 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 no. Kind of wasn't proof. 4D. 5P, 6S, 4F, 5D, 6P, 7S, 5F, 6D, 7P. I made an oopsie. What is it? Option three. I was trying to look at that and I was messing up, so I just had to do it from memory. This is an option. It's not the option I like. If I wasn't a chem student and I'm looking at this, I think you were crazy. Yeah. Why do you think I leave it on the board when kids come in? It's fun. <laughs> yeah, this would make me not take chem. <laughs> what is all this mean? All right. For option two, Mr. Hall has to give you a gift. <gasps> I keep getting spoiled. I'm so mad. Sure I'm so, I'm blushing. I'm kicking my feet. Liv, my goal is by the time we're in January, we're having full on conversations. I think I counted right. If I miscounted, just yell at me. All right, I gave you a periodic table for a reason. Everybody got a new one? Yeah. The reason I gave you a new periodic table is because of what we're getting ready to do with the periodic table. Oh, we can with shenanigans on it? We're doing shenanigans. Right. That's your bummer. Who's the dead, Mr. Hall? You should have worn I told you, any day you come in here, have them. Okay. Here's how I like to do the fill order. The first thing you have to do is hmm. you have to know the blocks of the periodic table. The blocks are the letters S, P, D, and F. They have special locations on your periodic table. So first we start with the S block. So S block are columns one and two oh. off the periodic table. Now, I'm going to encompass all of this. This is S block. Here's the thing I need you to get, though. With following this method, there are some exceptions to the rule. Here's the exception here. Helium that's over here by itself, treat it like it sits right here. Helium belongs to the S block. The reason helium is by itself, I'll go on and tell you, helium sits by itself because it is a noble gas. That's what the 18th column is. So that's S block. Now we go to P block. P block is columns 13 <coughs> through 18. Now here, at columns 13 through 18, do not include helium. Where does helium go? Yes, Thank you. So this is P block. Here's going to be the really funny thing is, you know how we joke around and say that kids come in after missing a day of chemistry and they feel like I'm speaking French? Kenzie and Emily are going to come in here tomorrow. <laughs> The next day, and they're going to be like, 
What is these S's, P's, 1's, 2's, 3's? She's never going to miss another day. The first day she misses, we do this. Kinsey picked a really bad <laughs> yeah. day. Next is D-Block. D-Block, straight up. D-Block has a special name. It's the Transition Metals. It's 3 through 12. That's a big difference. Sure. Question? Thank you. Wasn't sure if that was a sneeze or a cough. It was a sneeze. <laughs> My wife sneezes is really funny. If you've never heard her sneeze, it is hilarious. Because she'll start off and it's like really quiet and then she's like, <laughs> It's like she's trying to push it through. I'm like, wow. Block. Oh, block. I like S block. I'm a P block type of guy. Down here at the bottom is the one D that block. everybody forgets. I'm a D block dog. Lanthanides and actinides are at the very bottom. They have a very special name. This is F block. Do not forget about F block. Now, whenever you look at this, there are certain rules that go along with it. I'm going to write something on the board, and then I'm going to come back here. <coughs> so what we're dealing with is on the periodic table. So this is option one. Option two. On option number two is the periodic table. If we're going to use the periodic table, you have to remember these rules. The number is in which follows this rule. Following rules. For S. So this is for S block. Well, I might as well just write that down. Because you are going to be like, for S block, N equals row. So whatever row on a periodic table you find yourself on, that's what N is. For P block, N equals row. Those are simple. D and F is where it changes. That's sure all. Yeah. What is a row and what is a column? I'm going to show you in a second. <coughs> Rows are left to right, columns are up and down. D block, N equals row minus 1. So whatever row you find yourself in, you will take it, and you will subtract one from it. F block, N is equal to the row minus 2. That's how we get the number. The letter is simple. Where do you think I decide if I need to put an S, P, D, or F? S, P, D, or F. What about the periodic table? Where you're at in Which block you're in? Which block you're in? <coughs> if I run through the S block, guess what it is? S, P, D, or F. Ask a question.
Okay. Let's go. He's, he's going to ask, what is this all used for? Are we going to learn this tomorrow? No, that is not what I was going to ask. Well, well, Mario, you got lab. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah, which time for us to go? It is. I don't want to. I understand. I wouldn't want to leave either. <laughs> Are you really going to get in trouble for an extra 10 minutes? Yes. Absolutely. Just tell him you tripped and fell. Honestly, he's close. never said anything about me joining the Zoom class like 30 minutes late when I forget sometimes. So I doubt it. But. Yeah, but if Miss Collins and that's it, it's your night in there, <laughs> we're all in trouble. Miss Collins. And I don't feel like getting called to the office. Miss Collins would be mad. Which is weird. Why would Miss Collins be more mad than the teacher? Here's how this goes. Where do numbers start? Zero. Two. One hundred. Okay, so go from zero to one hundred. Your account. Zero. Two. Three. Four. Same thing here. The numbers tell you where to go. The atomic numbers of the elements are literally going to tell us where we need to go and what we need to end up doing. So, let's check it out. Rows are left to right. Columns are up and down. Yeah. Okay? So I come here. What row is this? One, there's two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So there's the rows of the periodic table. Now, let's start it out. We start, we follow the atomic numbers. So I start here at one, I go through. What row am I? One. The first row? What block? S. So. 1S. Oh. Is there anything else up here to run through? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's part of this block. What? But I already ran through it. Stop the cap. Stop lying. Remember, helium's over there. This is already ran through. How do we just, like, like, I know it is, but like, uh, huh. Don't talk to me. Never mind. All right, so we went all the way through the first row. Let's go to the second row. What's this? Two <coughs> S. So two S comes after one S. Anything in the D block here? Uh, no. No. Well, what about P? Yeah. What's this? Two P. How'd you get that? Because second row P block. Second row P block. Remember, for P block, n equals row. So two P. You went through the second row. Let's go through the third. What's this? That's three S. Three S. Okay. So what about here? Three P. So wait, we don't go three D. No, but three D exists. Yeah, but we're not there yet, Mr. Hall. Well, where are we going next? Three P. We're gonna go to P block. So. 3P. 3P. Yeah. This is why I like the periodic table. It's all right. I don't know how many times kids will go 3D. 3D ain't there yet. Because watch what happens. 4D. 4. Four S. S. And then what about here? Well, now I'm hitting the D block. So what's that? 4D. 4D. Look on the board. D block, N equals row minus one. What row are you in? Four, so three. Fourth row minus one, that's three. So that's 3D. That's so cool. That's, I love 3D. Now, where are we at? Uh, <coughs> uh, 2D? Uh, 2P. Wait, no? I'm no, you got this. I'm losing my mind. 4P. Uh, 4P. 4P, how do you get 4P? N <coughs> is equal to row. Now we go 5. 5 is. This is the part where you start picking it up. Look, I'm in D block. Remember, 4D. 4D. 5P. And 5P. Then? 6S. 6S. And you're going to see why I use this periodic table. Follow the atomic numbers. I go from 56. I should go to what after 56? 57. 57. That's 71. Close enough. There is literally a box here. The box is there because the lanthanides actually fit right there. 
Oh, that's what I'm saying. But instead of having this big, huge, long, drawn out thing, we drop the lanthanides and actinides down. We should make the periodic table like an animal. That is so cool. Mr. So now you're in the F block. What's this? That's uh, that's F of eight, six, uh, six F. Six. Six? Minus two. Minus two. That's four F. So four F. Now look, 70. Go to 71. This is I'm so back cool. in the D block. What row am I? So what is this? 6P. Oh, 16. Oh, 5D. 5D. Remember, row minus 1 for D. I'm not paying attention. Oh, that's really like then 6P. I just really like the P's. 7S. Look here, another placeholder. I go from 88, I should go to 89. 89 is down here. 5F. Actinium. I mean, if I have. 5F. Then I come back up here, which is uh, 6D. 6D, and then 7C. 7P. Okay. We just did the same field order that's on the board. Can you get the periodic table? The you will get a periodic table on your quiz. Okay. That does not change. Questions on that? Okay, that's the off-ball principle. And option three, if you choose, is just a memory. I don't recommend doing the memory, but that's up to you. So you have that, that option. Then we go to what is people's probably favorite rule. This one is called the poly exclusion principle. Is this part of the uh, option two or is this a whole different thing? This is a new rule. Gotcha. This is rule, oh, I should do it like this. Two, sorry. <coughs> poly exclusion principle is not that bad. Poly exclusion principle states that. And this is very important. No two electrons for the same atom can have the same four quantum numbers. We haven't went through the quantum numbers yet. Quantum numbers are in the next lesson. But what you need to understand is what the quantum numbers work like. Quantum numbers work like zip codes. Can Pineville be in area code 24870? No. Why? Because that's Oceana. Exactly. You cannot occupy. Can Pineville be 24822? No. No. That's clear for it. You just flex on those or something. Third rule. Pineville. What is Pineville sitting there? I'll say I don't know. Here's what Hun's rule states. Orbitals of equal energy levels will each obtain one electron before obtaining a second. I will let you know orbitals are 
are the probability areas of where we find electrons. So this is where electrons are located at. That's what orbitals are. Here are the three rules. I know I spent a lot of time on off-ball principle because you needed to get the fill order. Here's the thing before you go out of here today. You need to know all three rules, what they are, what they state, what they define. Kids do great when we get into doing the electron configurations, but then they forget the rules behind the electron configurations. In my class, you must not only know what to do, but you have to know why you're doing it and be able to explain it. Do you understand? Yeah, what's the overall again? It's probability area of where the electron is. We will cover that more in depth. Have a great, wonderful rest of your day. I want you to choose me an element. For the love of God, don't make it a big one. Hey. <clears throat> nice. I really like iodine. I like mm -hmm. I like bromine. Can you use that one in the bottom, the second to the bottom right? I like Uno Pentium. Like on the main bottom, not, not the top. Alright, all those in favor of iodine, raise your hand. All those in favor of bromine, raise your hand. I want the all those is just, hey, there we go, I got four. Okay, we're going to bromine. Right bromine. 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 All right, bromine, bro. so <laughs> here's what you're going to do. Here's what I like to do on my periodic table, which I'm pretty sure I gave everybody one. If you need another one, I can give you one. Because I mark my element. What I'm going to show you this year, I'm going to change it up. I'm going to do what, what I normally don't do. I think I can speed this lesson up, giving you all three at once, and exposing you to all three at once, and getting you to have an understanding of all three at once. So what we will do is we will start, and every one of these are going to be for bromine. All right, breaking this down. <laughs> All right, everyone we look at, first here in the blue, I'm going to show you something called orbital notation. I'm going to show them to you, then we'll define them and talk about them. All right? I'm going to go slow, but just watch with me. Whenever we do an orbital notation of an element, we have to write and show the orbital. We do this. We have to write the orbitals, and the orbitals we uh, show is just underscores here. But below them, we write and assign what orbital it is. So this is the 1s. I understand the blank looks right now. You have no idea what this is. Remember, I'm showing you, then I'm defining and telling you. The second one, after we go through the 1s, we go to the 2s. What this is, is the fill order. After 2s, we go 2p, but oh. p have three orbitals in them. After the 2p, we go to the 3s. After 3s, we go 3p, so there's three underscores. Go to the middle. 3p. That's where I get myself in trouble. One, two, three, four. Four. After 3p, we go to the fourth row. We get into what is called 4s. 
I'm going to do it down here, <coughs> just so we don't run over. That's very important to remember. After 4S, if you look on the fourth row, you go through the S block, you pop into the transition metals, which is the D block. You got to remember, whenever you're talking about the D block, N is equal to the row minus 1. So it's 4 minus 1. D has 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it's 3D. Because it's the row minus 1. And then we get to 4P, which is actually where our element is. So 1, 2, 3, 4P. Now there's the fun part. What have I done? I've used off-boss principle. Remember off-boss principle is the one that talks about electrons going to low synergy levels? And it gives us the fill order in which they will fill. Hold on a second. This is bothering me. That line's higher. Now what we have to do is we have to give the electrons here. So we have to show the representation of the electrons. We do this by using arrows. Now I want to make sure I'm clear here. You have some options of arrows you can use. You're going to see that I will not use these. You can use up arrow and a down arrow, which is totally fine. But I want to show you what Mr. Hall likes to do. I like these. They are arrows, it just makes everything a lot faster for me. So everything is full until I get to 4P. Once I get to 4P, then I know I need to stop and figure everything out. So I'll go ahead and fill it up. Each orbital that is full has one up and one down. There's a reason for this. All right, now I've made it to the 4P. I'll let you catch up. Better if I do it this way. Now I see why they gave me books. Perfect. Okay. Once you get there, I stop at the 4P for a reason. You have to remember, okay, not so much about uh, the Pauli exclusion principle where it says that no two electrons in the same element will have the same four quantum numbers, but we have to remember Hundrel. Hundrel states that orbitals of the same energy level will each receive one electron before it receives a second. This is kind of the way of looking at it. You're getting on a bus with a bunch of strangers. When you get on the bus with a bunch of strangers, are you going to sit in the seat by yourself or would you sit in the seat with a complete stranger? You're going to sit with a like you're not going to sit with a complete stranger, you're going to sit by yourself. Why? Cuz you don't know those people. So It's kind of a way of looking at it. And now what you have to do is we have to count so remember, right here, 
Column 13, this is where we shift from D to P. So now we're going into the P block. Count how many elements into the P block you are. That tells you how many electrons you have to show. So gallium is one, germanium is two, arsenic is three, selenium is four, and bromine is five. I have five electrons to show and that is it. We do not show any more. Those actually have names now. So, I have the five electrons to show, and remember, this is where Hundrel comes into play. I promise you, look at my eyeballs right now. I'm going to give you a quiz on this, and I will lay a trap, multiple traps, to where I will catch you if you don't use and follow Hundrel. Speak slowly and softly for us, please. <laughs> Hi. Louder. Hi. <laughs> anyway, you go to the 4P. The first electron will fill the first empty energy slot. Boom. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> it's the first. Is that an up arrow? That's an up arrow. We always start with up arrows. Very <laughs> good. Now, <laughs> next, we're going from here, and we're going to go to the next empty slot. Whoa. The next empty orbital will get another up arrow. I absolutely can't believe it. That's Hundrel, everybody. Woo. Holy oh. moly. Guess what happens at the third one? Don't tell me to go. Oh. Oh, I think I know, I think I know. I think Kenzie? I think it's an up arrow. It's an up arrow! <laughs> <laughs> Kenzie, you're so smart. Thank you. Now That's kids, this is where things get tricky. Because we now have one electron in each one. Yes. But I still have two electrons to show. So what am I going to do? You're going to start with the down arrows, right? We're going to start with the down arrows. Way to go, Kenzie. <laughs> So now we're going with the down arrow in the first one. There's four. What do you think the fifth one's going to go? <laughs> I don't know. Throw it at me. <laughs> Boom. Whoa. It's a down arrow. That is a proper orbital notation for bromine. How, How do you spell down? D-O-W-E. <laughs> oh. Wow. Alright. How do you feel after that? Well, finger painting the Weird. <laughs> really weird. <laughs> Unnatural. Look at that. I think Look. you should teach every lesson like this. Never happened. <laughs> Alright, so you can here's the thing. Man. You can do, you can sound like a... This is orbital notation. I'm going to look at you and tell you. This is the long one. This takes forever. I ain't doing all that. There's a reason I looked at you and I said, don't give me a big one. Eli. Nerd. Sorry. Nerd. Don't say nerd. Now. Nerd. Truth be told. Oh, white man here. Identify me. Okay. Be yourself. I hated that thing. So how do you tell that? Because it says it's bromine at the top. That's the only way. It's the only way. Oh God, I forgot the whole like. How, where do you start at to go up, All right. down, up, down, up, down, and get now, way to the right? we go from orbital notation, then we go to the one that's common to everybody that... Who are you talking to me? Be cool. Are you talking to me? We leave orbital notation and go to what is called electron configuration. Shut out gallium. We're going to use the same one. I'm just say we shut out gallium. Now we're going to go to the electron configuration. Electron configuration changes. So what happens here, we're no longer showing arrows. We still keep the orbitals with the energy level and the shapes. That's what S, P, D, and F stand for, those shapes. But now it's all about how many electrons are in there. So I have one S, two. Understand that is a 2. Do not look and say 1s squared. 
It's 1S2. Hannah's getting some medicine and she starts crying. Don't be alarmed. She hates medicine. So then we go 2S2. After that, we go 2P6. Because there's six electrons in there. Then we go 3S2. 3P6, 4S2, 3D10, 4P, how far into the P block were we in the fourth row? Five. Five. 4P5. This is, this is wild. So, Mr. Rock, can you tell me what this means? What this is, is telling you locations and positions of electrons. I mean... So, here is showing something focused in on spin. So, we focus in on the spin number here. Here, we just care about how many electrons are in that orbital and that subshell. She didn't cry or nothing. How'd you do that? Um, I didn't get it all. She didn't take it. She done the finger trick. I was trying. Right here. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, Hannah is going to cry. We can just quiz it? Yeah, go ahead. Let's go. I'm going to print it right now. Let's right, go. Go ahead. We got no. this. No. I'll definitely get the gas off this year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what That's that electron configuration. That? Here comes my favorite. I'm ready. Best for last. Noble gas. Ooh. That's all we're getting. Configuration. Because this one's in purple. Is this just for lack for variety, or is this one the most important? This is just lack of variety, and it's also I stress this part because kids miss out on points every year because they won't listen to me. Here's what you have to do. You go on your periodic table. I'm going to show it to you. Find your element. Found it. Take your finger and put on it. Krypton. Raise up one row. Go over to the 18th column. That's the noble gas you're going to use. Show the Oregon. The 18th column is noble gases. Is it always up one to the right one? Yeah, no. Like, oh, it's wait, up know. one and to the 18th column. The trick is if I give you a noble gas, follow the rule. Up one over to the 18th column. If you're already in the 18th column, do you go over any? No, you just go up one. What if it's hydrogen? You can't do a noble gas configuration of hydrogen. Okay. You have to at least be at lithium before you can do noble gas period. So what happens is the noble gas substitute in for all those in the beginning. So we're going to Yeah, wait, isn't hydrogen a noble gas anyways? Helium. Helium is noble gas. Oh yeah, you said that little red line over is the noble gas, right? No, I have never addressed the red line with you. Yeah, you did. Didn't you? No. Like, Stop the cat a month ago. Yeah, I know. but I thought that's what the, I don't know. If I did, it's because y'all asked about it. Yeah, yeah, what's probably. the red line? It separates metals and non-metals. So noble gas configuration. You take the noble gas that you have and let it substitute in for the big long stuff at the beginning. So I'm using argon. You take this chemical symbol, write it down. First letter's capitalized, second letter's lowercase. Yes, Put it in square brackets. This is the point everybody misses. If you give me parentheses, I have to mark it wrong. That's so sad. It has to be in the square brackets. Love you, beautiful. Love you. Hey, have a great day. Knock it out. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Oh, yeah, yeah. Show me this.
Stinking. Because it lives in a box. It doesn't want to okay. be cool. 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 Oh, yeah. Which you got to even click it? Uh -huh. It comes up. It wants to. It reminds me of the house. And these, you can click and change the color. Okay. So that's, so that's a pants that you can write. So like right Should now, it's in front of his house. It works. It just reminds me of his house. I don't know. He didn't have a box of stuff. He kind of pulled him out of there. Yes. Okay. And you get the red X to get rid of it. So you can move and you'll have your red X in order to go to the next one. Okay. Thank you. Well, all right. So, Argon. What you're going to do is look at Argon. Argon ends in the third row, P block. So it ends at 3P6. In other words, I allow Argon to fill in for all of this. From 1S2 to 3P6, Argon fills in. So I pick up in the fourth row. So I now have 4S2. 3D10, 4P5. You may not appreciate that right now, but whenever I have you doing ones like, you know, Atomic Member 95, you will love them. I miss oh, wait, yeah. I don't know why. That's that that been the right. only thing that's like made not sense. Like, variable. Yeah. Okay. So I want to break these things down for you and give you an idea of like what we're doing. These are the three different notations, okay? I know we took a lot of time today going through notations, but I wanted to go ahead and show them all to you so that you know what's coming. So now what we're going to look at is how each one of these interact. So first here at orbital notations. You look at orbital notations. First thing you've got to know is orbital notations are the ones with the underscores and the arrows. So we use underscore to show orbitals with energy level. And shape under. ECA, don't y'all have to go? Yeah, I can boost you. Leaving. You'll be alright. He doesn't ever do We haven't learned a single thing in his Zoom class. He literally, he was like, you'll learn more from Alex. And he's like, okay. He's done maybe three lessons all year on actual I, math, and the rest I, of the time, he's just talking about Alex and I, telling us how to do stuff. I don't think he cares about the class. Because one day we did not okay. see the work he was doing, and I opened my mic to tell him, and he just completely ignored me. <laughs> yeah. What time is it? We should shut up, Mr. Phil. Stop. 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 So, the shape under the underscore. Here's the thing what are the shapes? Shapes also stand for subshells, but they're the S, P, D, and F. Where do we get the S, P, D, and F from? The blocks on the periodic table. Yes. Then, uses up and down arrows to show electrons and here's the kicker the up and down arrow why is there an up and down arrow I have a question for you what is the charge on an electron negative what happens to things that are like charges? So like charges? Yeah, when they're like charges. They repel each other. They're the repel. same charge. They're going to repel. So how can I get two electrons to stick in the same spot? Magic is the charge. They're the opposite. Good for a time. The up and the down arrow 
is showing you spin. If we take something that has an electrical charge and we spin it, it builds a magnetic field. So what happens to this is we spin the electrons. Well, we don't. They just spin automatically. They spin, and what they form is an, a magnetic attractive force. Since they're spinning in opposite directions, they're attracted. It overcomes the natural repulsion force. That's why we use the up and the down arrows. Okay? Big thought. Huge. We're going to go a little bit deeper with that. So, um, you know, there's those. And every one of these, you have to use the three rules. We defined on Thursday, Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday. Now, electron configuration. Electron configuration. So electron configurations. Understand what I'm going to, I'm going to I'm going to define this in a way that you understand it, but this isn't what's really happening. It does away with underscore. keeps the energy level and subshell some examples like four S Does away with the underscores, it just keeps the energy level and the subshell. The subshells, S, P, D, and F. I did them out of order on purpose for you. Okay, so you can just get a look, look at what like examples look like. Places an exponent. In parentheses, not really an exponent. is an exponent to show how many electrons are in that subshell. I know you may not understand some of the terminology I'm using right now. You're going to pick that up in the next thing that we cover. This is the easy part of what we're doing. Don't freak out and go, oh my gosh, you said this is easy. I'm so confused. You just seen me work three examples that you literally have never seen anything of in your life. Connor's that works for the office. Then the first the part is there's no gas configuration uses the last crossed noble gas to substitute, or let's just say sub in, sub in for, uh, sub in, so we can change starting position. Thanks to note, must use 
square brackets. Any questions? I don't know if the noble does, I'll, I'll let you. They're all on page 25. Can you believe it? I'm on page two. Shut yeah, up. Uh, I'm going to make this one page. page. I'm going to make one page. You scare me. You just like, won't take notes and then randomly decide, hey, I should take notes today. I do take notes. I just don't know why everybody else takes up so much space. I'm yeah. sorry that I don't write like a fan. I'm going to say, I'm say this. Eli's a really smart dude. That he'll get away with it for right now. But whenever we get to nomenclature, I'm sorry, but you're no longer going to get away with it. You know, I so when I tell you, Eli, please, for the love of God, listen to me. When I look you in the eyeballs and I say, you must take notes. If you don't, you will fail the quiz. Do not try and take the challenge. I promise you. I had a super smart kid, super intelligent, did exactly what you're doing, had an A on every quiz. We get to nomenclature, told him every day, take notes, said, I don't got to. When we got there, well, he takes notes, it's just he doesn't write, you know, like the whole book like I do. Like everything you write. All right, so let's look at phosphorus, okay? Let's just okay? say he has a lot of faith in himself. He's not actually smart. He just has Google in his glasses. And so, the so I want to look at Yeah. I want to look at doing an orbital notation, electron configuration, double gas configurations. I want you to be familiar with these. What you're going to see are some extra notes that I'm going to add with these. Okay? So the first one we're going to get to, I want to look at phosphorus. So I look at phosphorus. Phosphorus is atomic number 15. I mark phosphorus so that I know where I want to stop. X marks the spot. In other words, I'm going all the way through the 1S, going all the way through the 2S, all the way through the 2P, all the way through 3S, but I get into 3P and stop. I make little notes for me so that I know things. So 3P3 is my stopping point. So the first thing I go through is 1S. Remember, orbital notation. Little underscores. <coughs> the energy level and the subshell. Then after the 1S, I go through the 2S. Then I go through 2P. Please notice that I'm labeling in the middle of however many they have. Then I go to 3S, then I go to 3P. I stop there because I'm going to 3P. Now I fill each one of these up until I get to 3P because it's full all the way through. Everybody understand? Go ahead and fill it. And then I'm going to stop at 3P. Why am I stopping at 3P? Because the rules matter. We followed off by principle whenever we did the fill order. Then we have followed the Paul exclusion principle. Call the office, by the fact that we have not gave any of the electrons the same four quantum numbers. And now we have to follow 100. Following students, say your report to Computer Lab 11 10. Haley Brewer, Raleigh Brewer, Haley Klein, Ethan Collins. So, Cook, looking here at 3P, how many electrons do I have to show? How far into 3P did we go? No, three. It's three. Do you see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Aluminum, silicon, phosphorus. So there are three of them. So I have to show three electrons. This is one that will prove to me whether or not you're following hundred. First one goes here. 
Second one's here. Third one's there. There's no down arrows. Because we stay up. Absolutely. Okay. Some notes to go along with this. Hey, I just can't hear the in the way of the board. Like, oh wow, that really helps. Thank you a lot. Some things to understand. At least I can see. <coughs> we look at the subshell. They have a certain number of orbitals to them. So the subshells that we have are the S, P, D, and F. S subshells have one orbital. P have three. D have five. And F have seven. If you struggle with this, a good way to remember, count how many columns is in the block and divide by two. S block has two columns. Divide by two is one. P block, one, two, three, four, five, six. Divide by two is three. D block is ten. Divide by two, it's five. F block is fourteen. Divide by two, it gives you seven. This tells you how many of these they can have. Now, there are some key differences in terminology. A student taught under a teacher that was very cruel. I'm not saying he was the devil's brother, but there definitely was some relation somewhere. And this is why. Taught the lesson. And he looked at me and told me I had to put this question on my quiz. How many electrons can go into a P orbital? This is the reason it's a trick. And I knew the kids were going to, was going to miss it, and everybody did. This is why. This whole purple box is the 2P subshell. Everybody said six, because they thought one, two, three, four, five, six. Six electrons going to be. But that's the subshell. These are the orbitals. The correct answer is only two. And it doesn't matter if it's an S orbital, D orbital, F orbital, P orbital, it doesn't matter. How many electrons can go inside of an orbital? Two. Only two. How many electrons can go into an S subshell? Two. One S, this is a subshell. It only has one orbital. How many electrons can go into a P subshell? P subshell. Six. Six. There's three orbitals in a, a P subshell. How many electrons in a D orbital? Two. No, two, D two, two, orbital. Two. Two. Uh, two. Man, this don't make no sense. It doesn't to you because I'm not. I'm. I'm breaking you from a habit. You guys are used to repetition and keeping it the same. I changed the questions on you on purpose. You have to pay attention. How many electrons can go into a D orbital? Two. How many electrons can go in a D subshell? Ten. Ten. 
you can have two electrons in each orbital. A D subshell has five orbitals, which means it can hold up to ten electrons. What is an orbital? It gets into, this is one of those things you just have to accept it as it is right now. And I'll go into more detail later. But as of right now, I would just tell you it's a probability area where you will find the electron. I was going to say, isn't it funny space where they hang out? Yes. <laughs> but it's quite intriguing. No, it's funny. Hmm. So there's two electrons in every single subshell. No, in every, in every single orbital. Can be. Okay, so let's look at it this way. Let's do an electron configuration. And let's do it for carbon. X marks the spot. So I'm going to carbon. Now, electron configuration. What's the difference with orbital notation and electron configuration? Uh, it gets no arrows and no uh, That's right. Now we count the electrons and we put what for them? Uh, the exponents, but they're nice. not exponents. Correct. So I go all the way through, first row, S block, so 1S, 2. I go all the way through the second row, S block, so that's 2S, 2. Then I go to 2P. How far in did I go? So 2P2, and that's it. How many electrons is in the 2P subshell? Subshells only two. There's only two. If you look at the 2P subshell broken apart into orbitals, one, two. Is there anything here right now? No. So with there not being nothing there, it still exists, but there's nothing in it right now. There eventually will be. This takes us into bonds. Okay. Mr. Hall give you a trick now, okay? Prepare yourself for the trick. Mr. Hall is trying to find, how tricky should I make this? Like tricky chick? It's Halloween. <laughs> Very no. tricky. Okay. Tricky chick, here it is. So, yep, that'll work. I want the noble gas configuration of radon. It's no gas configuration of radon. Atomic number 86, right? Yeah. So, remember with noble gases, put your finger on it, go up a row, go all the way to the 18th column. Finger on it, up a row, all the way to the 18th column. Where am I? Yeah, I'm already at the 18th column, so it's Xeon. That substitutes in, that literally substitutes in for all of this. So I don't long, no longer have to count any of this. All that's gone to me. Now comes the fun part. So I've changed my starting point. After Xeon. After Xeon, we go down to the sixth row. This is where I'm starting. Sixth row S block. So what do I start with? I was scared to say that. 6S. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. Listen, I wanted to say that. I've taught this different than in the past seven years of how I've taught this. I changed how I'm teaching it to you guys because I think it will go better this way. So 6S 
to be careful here. Where do we go from there? I give you this periodic table on purpose. Where am I going? I go to the F block. Good job, Rose. You have to go to the F block. That's the reason I use, still use this periodic table to this day. I love the blank there to tell you, hey, you need to go to the F block. Now remember, F block, N equals rho minus what? Rho minus 2. So we take the row, what row are we in? The empty block tells you the row. You're still in the sixth row. You're still in the sixth row. The sixth row. Thank you. So sixth row, six minus two is four. F. And I go all the way through it, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. You guys are so terrified. Oh, well, it's Halloween, Mr. Hall. You never know when you're going to bust out. 4F14. You never know when you're on what? You never know when you're going to bust out. Bust out, okay. Do you think that's cussed? You never know when you're going to get cussed out. I'm like, not oh, this room. Right. <laughs> After 4F, where do we go? Uh, well, Mr. Hall, that's really a hypothetical question. Stay in class. Wait, notes for the notebook guys. Because it looks like it looks like we just got like, yeah, gotta go back right now. Four to three. Going to English class. I love Follow the numbers. Look at the end of the acting Wait, hang on. Oh my god. Look at the end of the acting Deuterium. Deuterium. I probably misspelled that. Deuterium. I have no idea. It's YB. It's atomic number 70. What comes after 70? 71. So go to 71. Where's 71 at? The D block. He's around. It's we go into the D block now. But remember for D block, what's the rule? Uh, N equals what? Uh, row minus 1. Row minus 1. So what row are we in? The D block. What row are we in? 6. Oh. So subtract one. Oh god, I'm five D. How far in did we go? Oh, one. one? Did we didn't move it. One zero. Right. X marks the spot. Oh. Uh, oh wait. Is that a different block? Can we do that? Is that allowed? Is that is that illegal, Mr. Will we get in trouble? There's the end of the D block. Absolutely. What I'm asking you is how oh. far in the D block we go. We went all the way through it. My bad. So how many electrons are there? I counted 10, but I could be wrong. There is 10. If it helps you any, how many orbitals are there in the D? Five. Yeah, Multiply bad. by two. Two, 10. That logic left my brain after we talked about it. Okay. Now from here, from 5D, where do we go? D block around. Don't say that. Yes. Oh, we know what we're talking about. This. How morning. far into the peak? Uh, well, you like to know. Six. I already know. Six. So six P six. That's the noble gas for radon. Wow, I'm loving this, Mr. Hall. This will, doesn't make me want to. We will be needing a practice sheet. This is. Horrible. There will be a practice sheet. For us. We will be needing thoughts and prayers. Okay. How you feeling? Horrible. Like on a scale from one to like a zero point three. Couple and zero point two, honestly. I'm feeling the mass of the electron. I didn't. Where? Let me show. Can you show me where the um the blocks are? <laughs> First of all. Wait, that's not it. I'm about to say. Why are you doing a piece of paper? Animatronic is what I thought. Okay. Here's what I want you to do now. I'm ready. 
I want you to give me an orbital notation, electron configuration, and noble gas configuration. I want all three for these elements. Why are you so needy, Mr. Hall? Okay. Mr. Hall, we don't Top number 28, nickel. That's 28. You don't need that back? No. No, I need that back. No, I need it. No, I'm just going to do this more than you. I feel like I need to slow down, even though I'm like at a really slow pace right now. Oh, you're slow, right? Well, Mr. Genius, you've been doing this for years. Yeah, technically. Mr. Smart. Okay, here's, hey, before you start on this, look up here at me. Okay, here's what I want you to see. Here, here is literally what I'm doing. I'm choosing my stopping point. I find my element. So I look for nickel, number 28. Here's nickel. This is my stopping point. Then from there, I just start and I work my way there. We always start here at hydrogen, unless it's noble gas, and it changes your starting point. So here is the first row. What block is that? S, S right? I went all the way through it, so that's 1S2. You got to remember, helium's over there. That's how we treat it. Now, there's nothing there in the P block. So I come back to the second row. Second row, what block? S, S so that is 2S. Two. Two S. How far in did we go? Two. two, so it's two. Now, there's nothing here in the D block, but look, we now hit the P block. So what do we have for P? Uh, two P. Two P. Have I hit my stopping point? No, so I went all the way through. So this is 2P. Okay. Give me the number. Uh, six. 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 Where is the number coming from in the beginning? These first numbers are the rows. Remember, those are N. That's the energy level. For S and P, N equals the row. So I now come to the third row. S block, so what's the energy level? Uh, three. Why do you say three? Third row. I'm in the third row. What subshell? Uh, what's the block? S. S. I'm all the way through, so two. Hmm. Nothing in the D block, but then I get here to P block. What's this? 3 P6. So 3P6. Now, come to the fourth row. What's this one? 4S2. 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 Be careful. All of a sudden, I now have hit D block. What is N for D block? The row minus one. So, what's the energy level here? I'm in the fourth row. So three. Three D. Now look. I didn't go all the way through here. I went to nickel, and I've stopped. Count it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's three D eight. Um uh, and that's it. So what is that? That's a really easy that's a lot easier than I thought it was. Yeah, I was hey, trying, here's, in my brain I was trying to go all the way through the entirety of the road. And I was like <laughs> I get where you're coming from. Here's the thing that goes with this. I have to get you to catch the pattern. Once you catch the pattern, you're golden. I can't trick you. That's why I'm trying to get you with the pattern. That's why I use the periodic table with this. 
That's the electron configuration for nickel. Any questions? Is D block the only one that's special where you do minus one? Or there is like F? F, you subtract two. Everybody good? Would you please do me a favor? Would you please group up with your, your peeps? No. I still need the orbital notation and I need the noble gas configuration. Do you want me to leave that up there for you? Yes, you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> please. Please give me the orbital notation and the noble gas configuration. Okay. No, I understand. I still don't understand orbital. I've never been a big fan of space and stuff. Yeah. All right. When writing orbital the D block, right? Well, we can only use like ten orbitals out of five orbitals of a line. Five orbitals. Yeah. Never mind. Never mind. It just came to me in a dream. Nice. So helium doesn't count on S. Wait, never mind. I have it written down. Helium isn't on S. Helium is on P. I'm done. Okay, three P. I'm not a big fan of this orbital guy. One S, two S. Three. With electrons, I can get behind that. The orbitation, no. One S, two S. Notation on this. Oh. Orbital notation on this, we get to 3D. All of them are full until the 3D. And Zoe asked a really good question. That N equals rho minus 1 for D, N equals rho minus 2 for F. All of those still exist no matter what you're doing. That's for orbital notation, electron configuration, noble gas configuration. Those rules are still to be followed. Now, how far in did we go? Here's the fun part. I got the number right there, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the orbital notation. Then we have the noble gas configuration. I stress this, you have to have the noble gas, the last Krauss noble gas, in square brackets. So it's argon. My new starting point is at the 4s, so 4s2, 3d, 8. That is the electron configuration, orbital notation, and noble gas configuration for nickel. Do you have any questions? Yes, Mr. Hall. Why, why at the end of 3d is it positive, positive? Why is it not normal? Hun's rule. Hundred. Right, hun. There's one, two, three, four, five. Five orbitals within the D. Mm -hmm. Which means each one gets one electron before it gets a second. Mm -hmm. So 
first section, let's do it this way. Here's the first, second, third, fourth, fifth electrons in that third, that meant 3D. Now I have another three to add. So I go back in and I start adding it in the opposite direction. Six, seven, eight. So you only have eight that can go into D? There's only eight in D. Ten can go, but how far is nickel in the D log? Oh, okay. Never mind, that makes sense. So if you have questions, come see me tomorrow. Not tomorrow, because uh, I got professional day. Thursday when you come in, 